In this lesson, we are talking about the side effects of ACE inhibitors. So we're going to talk about what ACE inhibitors are. We're going to talk about some of the examples of ACE inhibitors. And we're also going to talk about the side effects of ACE inhibitor use. So ACE inhibitors, or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, are medications that are used to reduce blood pressure and aid in reducing proteinuria. They have some other functions as well, including some effects on heart health. So they can be used in a variety of different patient populations, including hypertension patients, kidney disease patients, and diabetes patients, including some other heart failure patients as well. And these medications all end in the suffix pril. So we can see in this example here, we have ramipril, that is one of the ACE inhibitors. Enalapril is another example, captopril is another example, and perindopril is another example. And they act by inhibiting the formation of angiotensin II. And as is in their name, they are angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. So they inhibit an enzyme known as ACE, or angiotensin-converting enzyme. This enzyme converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. It has some other effects, including breakdown of something known as bradykinin or bradykinin. And we'll talk about why this is important and why I bring this up in the next slide. But... But what's important here is that they prevent the production of angiotensin II, which is a potent vasoconstrictor, or it constricts blood vessels, so it increases blood pressure. So it prevents the production of angiotensin II. But the problem is, is that ACE inhibitor use may cause a variety of mild and severe symptoms. So we're going to talk about those symptoms in the next upcoming slides. So what are some of the side effects of ACE inhibitor use? One of the common side effects of ACE inhibitor use is a dry, hacking cough. This is known as an ACE inhibitor-induced cough. And the reason why ACE inhibitors can cause a dry cough is because ACE inhibitors prevent the degradation of bradykinin. As we mentioned in the last slide, the angiotensin-converting enzyme degrades bradykinin. But if we're inhibiting that enzyme, we're going to inhibit the degradation of bradykinin, leading to increased levels of bradykinin. And increased levels of bradykinin in the lungs, in particular, may induce coughing. And Again, as I mentioned before, this is a relatively common side effect that may affect anywhere from 0% of patients to upwards of 44% of patients. Another side effect of ACE inhibitor use is something known as angioedema. So this is a severe side effect. It is swelling of the tongue and lips. So it's a serious, severe side effect that may cause issues with respiration. You can imagine that if your tongue or your lips start to swell, you may have occlusion of your airways. You may not be able to breathe or swallow properly. So this can be a big issue. There can also be angioedema of the intestines, which occurs more commonly in women, that can lead to abdominal pain and diarrhea. It's less common, but it can occur as well. So this side effect of angioedema can lead to swelling of the tongue and lips, and it can also lead to a swelling of the intestines leading to abdominal pain and diarrhea. Most often what happens is that patients will have some mild episodes of angioedema over time. They may not think much of it, and then they may have an episode where it becomes very severe, requiring a visit to the hospital. So that's what most commonly will occur in patients who get this side effect. Another side effect of ACE inhibitor use is high potassium levels. This is known as hyperkalemia, so high potassium levels in the blood. And it's because ACE inhibitor use causes the kidneys to hold on to potassium. So we can get hyperkalemia or high potassium from ACE inhibitor use. This can lead to some symptoms of high potassium, including muscle weakness, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and even cardiac arrhythmias. So if you want more information on signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia, please check out my lesson on that topic. We can also see fatigue occurring in ACE inhibitor patients. This is a side effect as well. This can be related to hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia can cause muscle weakness, but also some fatigue, and this may be related with ACE inhibitor use. We can also see skin rashes occurring with ACE inhibitor use. Multiple varieties of skin lesions can occur. This is a drug-induced eruption. We can see bulla or bullous presentations, and we can also see pruritic urticaria. So pruritic means they are itchy. Urticaria are hives. So there can be itchy hives that can occur as well. And this can most commonly occur with captopril. So these skin rashes more commonly occur with captopril. 
And we can also see some photosensitivity occurring as well. So some sensitivity to the sun or sunlight. Another side effect of ACE inhibitor use is hair loss. So some hair loss may occur with ACE inhibitor use, although this is a rare side effect. So it can occur with use of any of the ACE inhibitors, but again, it's quite rare. It may occur in roughly 1% of patients. Another side effect of ACE inhibitor use is reduced sense of taste. Now this is a more distortion or disturbance of taste. So their ability to taste certain types of flavors may be altered or affected. So this can be subtle or can be quite noticeable. And again, this is most commonly seen with Captopril. And then because ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure, we can have issues with hypotension or a low blood pressure. So this can be due to a first dose phenomenon. So the first time a patient starts to use ACE inhibitors, they may have lower blood pressure than is what is wanted or desired, but it may occur anytime during use. And now this can most often occur when patients are dehydrated, if they're exercising, they're sweating a lot, or in some other types of patients, including congestive heart failure patients. So this is more common in those types of situations. Basically, this means that there is too much ACE inhibitor mediated action. So this can cause hypotension and it can lead to signs and symptoms of hypotension, including presyncope, which is a feeling of lightheadedness. There can be syncope in some cases where a patient may faint and there can be some other symptoms as well, including weakness and fatigue. So some of these are some signs and symptoms of hypertension that can occur with ACE inhibitor use as well. And we can also see issues with anemia with ACE inhibitor use. This is low level of red blood cells. It's because ACE inhibitors can inhibit erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is the hormone that stimulates your bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So this can lower the production of red blood cells, leading to a low level of red blood cells and anemia. And anemia can lead to a variety of symptoms, and some of these include fatigue as well. So again, ACE inhibitors can lead to anemia, although this is an uncommon side effect. And another uncommon side effect is leukopenia. Leukopenia means a low level of white blood cells. So this is or may be a rare side effect. There are some case reports of this occurring, having low levels of white blood cells, but it seems to be rare. And in that case, if there are low levels of white blood cells, particularly white blood cells like neutrophils, there may be an increased risk of infections. So again, a lot of these side effects we're talking about here are rare or uncommon. Some of the ones that we talked about earlier are more common. But again, most of these are uncommon side effects. If you want to learn more about other medications and their side effects, please check out my pharmacology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.